offer prayers along with 2,000 rupees, otherwise their son might die. That villager will even mortgage his land to shell out that amount. Today he is exposing a simple and common godman trick, throwing balls of fire. The key? Just combine dirt with potassium permanganate, which is a component of flash powder. And voila, a giant fireball. Currently, the number one most wanted godman on Gosha's list is our prosperous flying godman, Acharya Sachananda. He is an extremely wealthy man who cheats people out of money by using astrology. He scares people by telling them about problems that may not happen and then charges them $100, double the monthly salary of most Indians. One can imagine how much he is exploiting people. Prabir Ghosh has invited us along on his mission to expose Sachananda. Ghosh and his group of skeptics have set up an elaborate sting operation. He'll send in two teams of people, all unrelated, who will pose as family members. Each team will present Sachananda with a fictional problem they will ask him to resolve. As a godman who can tap into the mystical energies of the universe to control minds as well as read them, he should surely sniff out the counterfeits and expose them before they expose him. This can be dangerous work. Ghosh was once attacked and had several ribs broken while exposing a godman scam. Will Sachananda really be able to call upon his so-called sixth sense, read the skeptic's minds, and expose the operation? Severed heads. A baby drowned. Bodies turned inside out. And a corpse of unknown species. Defy everything you think you know about killings in the animal world. The evidence never lies. Predator CSI, tonight at 10, right after World's Deadliest Animals on the National Geographic Channel. The Edge of Drama. I was born to make my life worth living! Whoa! The Edge of Comedy. Climb the pants, pants anywhere? On the Edge of Your Seat. Oh. FX, The Edge of Entertainment. With Californication. <laughs> the Riches. Ah! Time Net. Easy. Top <laughs> Show, Saving Grace, and more. There's a new home of cutting edge award winning TV in Asia. FX, The Edge of Entertainment. This October, surf your way to Nat Geo Adventure. Let's get lost. What a trip. And add wonder. What can you tell us about this community that people don't know? Add action. Add danger. Adventure. I've never done tourism where you get insulted before. Make Nat Geo Adventure your next destination to explore. Welcome to Bolivia, my friends. Welcome to Bolivia. And lose yourself in this wonderful, beautiful, and amazing world this October on Nat Geo Adventure. Let's get lost. To subscribe to Nat Geo Adventure Channel, call your local cable operator now. Two men, two bikes, and an incredible journey from Scotland to the southernmost tip of Africa. That wasn't on a film set, that was in the real deal, you know. Long Way Down, Monday at 9 on the National Geographic Channel. Brought to you by Nokia. With Nokia Maps, you'll always find the places that you'll love the most. One of the greatest feats of archaeological engineering. It's racing. This World Heritage Site would have been flooded underwater if the move had never been taken. You could say we were trying to move a mountain. How do they carry out such an impossible task? Wow, look at that. Monster Moves premieres on Mega Thursday at 10 on the National Geographic Channel.
The first team enters the guru's office. The only information he asks for is the young woman's date of birth. After checking some charts, he tells the woman that she is unable to sustain relationships with men because her life is unbalanced. He then prescribes an expensive amulet that will protect her and gives advice as to the right person to marry. Yes, go went through a book and said, yes, 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 these are the problems. In, his, in her horoscope, these are very dangerous signs and she has to wear this medallion which costs 5,500 rupees. I think it's not even one month salary for these people who are sitting there. So you can imagine the amount of uh, hoax, amount of... Uh, cheating they are doing in the, in the name of this. They are just scaring people like anything. The second team meets with the guru and gets a similar treatment. Date of birth? We'll say 25th October. 78th October. Once again, he hands over a prescription that calls for purchasing a pricey amulet. <laughs> The plan then moves into high gear. A text message is sent to Ghosh, signaling that it is time to confront the Godman. <laughs> Ghosh then asks the team to retell the made-up stories to everyone, which causes an uproar. The guru demands that Ghosh return all of the documents he wrote and his entourage starts to get ugly. Once they realized that we were there to expose them and their fraudulent activities, their behavior suddenly became antisocial. They and their hired goons became violent towards us. Such an under staff demands that Ghosh and his team leave the office. But not everyone gets out in time. The National Geographic producer who has filmed part of the sequence is still trapped with an angry Satyananda and his entourage. We are here now at the Satyananda's ashram and they have captured our director because we have proved him wrong. He's already fake, he's a fraud and at the same time he has hit the director. I, I, the, the police are on the way. Yeah. They are on the way. Thanks to the police, our producer escapes with only bruises. But Satyananda's revenge has only begun. Three days later, while broadcasting his television program, Satyananda pleads with his followers to kill Prabir Ghosh. Satyananda is quickly arrested, and local politicians call for an end to broadcasts like his. In the end, apparently, the mystical energies of the universe deserted Satyananda. When you look at Satyananda, you see the paleness of his face because he became nervous. Why is that? If he's such a powerful godman that reads minds, why could he not read my mind too? This is how we expose Satyananda. For the moment, it seems, Ghosh and his skeptical team have grounded Acharya Satyananda. But it's time to return to the more remarkable claims of people whose superhuman abilities, however gruesome, seem real. Are Sufi mystics, who inflict terrible wounds on themselves, really tapping into a spiritual energy that prevents pain, bleeding, and infection? Can a snapshot of that energy be captured in a lab? Or is this all something modern medicine can explain? As we saw earlier, Sufi mystics of the Tariqa Kaznazaniya